Good evening. Good evening, Oli. How are you? Fine. And you? Good. How is your son? I am very bad today. Mm, continue. Bad. Yes, continue with fever. With fever? Yes. With fever? With fever. With? <laughs> with? With. with. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, teacher, uh, you continue uh, next course. Uh, I don't know. The, uh, the office decides sometimes yes, sometimes no. Uh, sometimes yes. Sometimes, <laughs> uh huh. Okay. Uh, um, uh, como, como se, um, esperar. I hope. I hope uh, uh, you continue with uh, with gay with we. Ah, uh, thank you, thank you, Oli. I hope so too. That would be the good. Thing. Yes, is is speak uh, Oscar English corporativo. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm solicity. A teacher continued. Hey, good. That's good. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do uh, I teacher? I my son is Raúl Carranza. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> wow. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. Uh, I'll, uh, uh, next next course is together. Ah, with my son. Wow. It's very yeah. unusual. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. And why are you going to be with your son in the next course? Uh, only. Solo él. Only him. Only he. Only he. Yes. Okay. Es, es very bad or, or is very, very good? We see. Oh, so. <laughs> no, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. <laughs> it's good, it's good, right? Okay. <laughs> is <it> my son. <laughs> That's good. Hello, Edwin, how are you? Hi, teacher. I'm fine. I just come in. Ah, okay. And it's raining. Um, it's raining, but a little bit, you know. A little bit. Uh, it's okay. okay. It's cold. To be in the camera. <laughs> in bed. Yeah, in the bed, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yes, all it's my room. It's my room. <laughs> That's good, Loli. Roxana, who are you? Uh, good evening, teacher. How is well, here it was raining a lot. Uh, but now it's not raining by your house, Roxana. What? It's not raining now. Yes, it's yesterday. raining a lot now. Uh, okay, okay. Yes. This is difficult when it rains a lot. It's difficult to hear and- Yes. Okay. Don't worry, I understand Roxana. Because when it rains here a lot, ah, it's hard. But, but it's, it's good for for- Go to bed? Yes. Going to bed, yeah? Yes, it's good. Then you relax. For sleeping, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when the teacher is in calumnies, you can hear. Yes, with sin calum, it's yeah, yeah. very loud. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Well, it's good to have you. Thank you for coming. And I'm glad that you are here, but we are going to continue with the idea for today's topic. Today's topic are noun phrases, okay? Now, what are the noun phrases is simple. We begin with the words like one thing, something, people. We begin with a noun and then your opinion. I miss, I like, I don't like. This is the idea. So in this moment, let's watch and learn a little bit about nine noun phrases. Teacher, no listen. No. Okay. No. No listen, yeah. All right. Let me try again. Maybe it's raining in the video. <laughs> At this particular moment, what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to make sense of these noun phrases which contain relevant. Can you hear now or no? Yeah. Yes, yes I do. Okay, okay. All right. So let's take a look at what he's explaining. Okay. What he wants to explain or what he's explaining is how we're going to use it and why we use it. We use this many times to describe about traveling or talking about going to another place. We use it and then we give our opinion. So for in, if you are in Canada, uh, one thing you, I really miss is pupusas. Okay, this is the noun phrase, right? Or something I'd be nervous about is speaking in English with the immigration officer. These are the ideas for the noun phrases, but don't worry, we're going to learn a little bit more and see the examples that they have. Um, first, we'll start talking a little bit about how we use this as a subject. And then we'll move into the object, probably the object, I'll separate this into a different lecture. So uh, in order to form this kind of um, expressions, first we're gonna have a subject. So in this case, this subject becomes one thing. Uh, then this is followed by a relative clause, I really miss. And then we're gonna have the uh, verb to be. Uh, in this case, as you can see, is the verb to be is. And then that's followed by um, an object or a phrase, if you will. So let's write that specific sentence down, and then we're going to try to make sense of it, as I mentioned. So let me do that at this point. Okay. All right. So as I mentioned, uh, one thing, sorry, one thing becomes the subject of the sentence. I've, I've colored that. So you see, it's nothing specific. It's just a thing. Right? It's it's just one of many things that you miss, or one of many things when you try. okay. That's why we use it. And then in the relative clause, is you give your opinion. Right? I would that's the I'd I would really miss, or I'd really miss, I'd hate, I I'd, I'd love, I'd like. All of those are the ones that you can use. Then we use the verb to be, and then the object. What are we talking about? Really here is, think about this part as what? What are we talking about, okay? So let's listen to the rest and see if we understand. In green, so we can uh, see the difference between what's a verb and what's a, what's a, uh, what's a subject, what's a relative clause, what's a verb, and what's the object of this particular idea. Then this is followed by the relative clause. I, I colored this in blue so you can see what, what I'm referring to as a relative clause. And then the verb to be. Now the verb to be needs to match with the subject. So if the subject uh, will be plural, then this should change to R. 
Um, and then it's followed by the object of the sentence. So in this case, my mom's cooking is the object of the sentence. What we're going to do. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to try in expressing our opinions about traveling, about going to another place. Okay. So if you leave El Salvador, imagine you left El Salvador, you went to Australia, you went to Germany, you went to another country. Ah, what do you remember about El Salvador? What do you want about El Salvador? Ah, something that I, I'd miss about El Salvador is, and then your ideas, is going to the beach, is eating pupusas, is the different things. That's how we use it. It's okay? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Okay. So, let me share one more time, and then we're going to practice making them with our partners. So, we are clear with that one? Yeah. Here's the expression. Look, I'd really miss, I'd be nervous about, I'd be anxious about, I'd be comfortable with. These are all of these used to describe your emotions or your feelings. And the other structure is the same. You use one thing or the thing, your expression, your opinion, and then the others. Just like that. All right, so with our partners, we're going to go and we're going to take a moment because if you travel, if you go to another place, what do you remember about El Salvador? What do you miss? What do you love? What do you hate? Whatever it is about the different places. <clears throat> it's okay? Yep. Okay. What would you be anxious about? What would you be comfortable with? What would you be curious about? What would you be enthusiastic about? What would you be fascinated by? Um, let's say that we choose the country, uh, maybe France, all right? So France seems like a very touristic place. And I think that a lot of people would like to travel to this place. So let's do that second one. One thing I'd be nervous about is, all right, that's going to follow the bird to be. And maybe for me is getting lost, all right? Uh, let me try to keep the format a little bit because I want you to notice that we have one thing is the noun, uh, the relative clauses I'll be nervous about. Then this is followed by the verb to be. And then this will be followed by the object of the sentence, okay? So for me, one thing I really be nervous about or one thing I'd be nervous about is getting lost. One thing I'd be anxious about is getting to know this new city. One thing I'd be comfortable with is the weather. One thing I'd be curious about is learning about the country's culture. One thing I'd be enthusiastic about is learning the new language. One thing. I'll be fascinated by is getting to know the history behind the architecture in that particular city. And so you get the idea. Um, so if we follow this pattern, subject plus relative clause plus verb to be plus the object, 
then we shouldn't uh, have any difficulties expressing these ideas. Uh, just one last thing that I would like to mention that if I change the subject to plural, okay, I will need to change the verb to be, and I will also need to change the object because both things need to be plural. They need to match with whatever the subject is. So for example, two things I really miss are my mom's cooking and my room at home. Okay, that's just to give you an example. And if, if the subject changes to something plural, then you will need to do the same for uh, the rest. So what I would like for you to do now is to practice this concept. I need your time. <laughs> I need you more time. It's okay, Oli. It's okay. We're going to try together. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it is too short. Okay, Helio. So here, we're going to try together each one. For example, the first one, I'd really miss. Okay. The next one, I'd be nervous about. Helio, begin the one uh -huh. with I'd, I'd really miss. I really miss. Okay. Oh, I, I would really miss being around my my family. Okay. Good. Good. That's how we use it. Okay. We are using the the ing form. What is this it's about? So you use I really miss being around my family or remember? Yes. Okay. So remember, we need to include more information. For example, the thing. One thing, oh. thing, whatever oh, it is, that's what we're going to include, a little bit more information. Oh, okay, all right. Okay. Was... So, for example, here, we yeah. use the subject, and then, uh -huh. then the opinion, and then okay. the other form. So, you mean, uh, you want me uh, another example? Give me another example, Helio. Uh, uh, something, something that I, I will be nervous is, about his missing uh, calls from relatives in another place. Right. Tell me the sentence again, Helio. Something I would uh, I would be I would I would be nervous about is a uh, missing phone call from my family. Good missing ing. Good. That's ing. Good. Yes. The ideas with ing, exactly. So as you can see, all of those, we're really using the expression. That's it, just the expression. And then it can be anything that you like, right? It can be oh, okay. anxious, nervous, uh, curious, whatever your opinion is, that's how you use it. Okay. Teacher, I said to you my, my example. Uh, for example, if I go to the the university, the the United States, mm -hmm. I I really uh, nervous uh, is traveling to to on plane on plane or in the plane airplane and the airplane plane. Plane okay. on the plane <laughs> yes traveling on uh, on or in in, in. airplane. What? In, in an airplane. How do you say? In. In. Traveling in. in an airplane. In an airplane. Yes. Okay, good. It's okay. Yeah. It's correct. That is correct. Okay. That is the idea. The structure is okay. One thing, two things, whatever amount, your opinion, and then what you are discussing, the verb to be and the object. So I really miss, ah, okay. I really miss, and then you have one is is, if you have two is are. Okay, so now we're going to go back to our groups, but now we want to complete. Remember here with our partners, 
like the examples we want to use, I'd really miss. I'd be nervous about, I'd be anxious. About. We want to use all of these with, with our partner. So for example, I do all one time. Then my partner does all of the sentences one time. It's okay? Uh, teacher, I don't ex I didn't understand exactly what we are going to do because your voice is oh, okay. corta. I don't know what I can say. Okay, okay, it cuts in and out. Okay, let me explain one more time. Let me share clear. Okay, we are going to use those expressions to describe things, okay? What things we're going to describe can be your last trip, can be your house, it can be anything that we have, okay? So the idea for all of those things are, what do you think about it? I'm nervous about, I'm anxious about, okay? All of those things would be it. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I would like to copy those. those I put those. it to the. You can copy, but it's it's in the WhatsApp group or right. in the platform five point three. Five point three. Mm -hmm. Five point five point three. Okay. Okay. All right. So now, one more time. We try one sentence for each one with your partner. One sentence for each one. Put a little bit more time. That way you have more time to complete partner. Okay. Edwin, can you connect? Okay. Less tours, traveling to other countries. You'll learn how to use noun phrases to do this. So let's get started by me asking you a few questions which you should be able to answer with no problems at all by the end of this class. When traveling to another country, would you be nervous about being far away from your family? Would you feel insecure about traveling alone? Would you be enthusiastic about making new friends? By the end of this class, you'll be able to use noun phrases which contain relative clauses in order to express your ideas when it comes to traveling. So let me present some structure at this particular moment. What we're going to try to do is we're going to try to make sense of these noun phrases which contain relative clauses. Um, first, we'll start talking a little bit about how we use this as a subject. And then we'll move into the object. Probably the object, I'll separate this into a different lecture. So uh, in order to form this kind of um, expressions first we're going to have a subject so in this case this subject becomes one thing uh, then this is followed by a relative clause I really miss and then we're going to have the uh, verb to be uh, in this case as you can see is the verb to be is and then that's followed by um, an object or a phrase if you will so let's write that specific sentence down and then we're going to try to make sense of it as I mentioned let me do that at this point. Okay. All right. So as I mentioned, uh, one thing, sorry, one thing becomes the subject of the sentence. I've, I've colored that in green so we can uh, see the difference between what's a verb and what's a, what's a 
uh, what's a subject, what's a relative clause, what's a verb, and what's the object of this particular idea. Then this is followed by the relative clause. I, I colored this in blue so you can see what, what I'm referring to as a relative clause. And then the verb to be. Now, the verb to be needs to match with the subject, if you will. So if the subject uh, were to be plural, then this should change to are. Um, and then it's followed by the object of the sentence. So in this case, my mom's cooking is the object of the sentence. What we're going to do right now is we're going to include a lot of uh, relative clauses uh, so that you can see that uh, this topic could it can become a little bit confusing. But if we understand uh, this structure, it, it shouldn't be difficult to complete. So let me include um, lots of relative clauses, all right? And what we're going to do is we're going to try to make sense of it, but we're going to try to uh, make different sentences with them, all right? So um, I mentioned one thing. Um, you, could, you could express this idea by saying something, right? Uh, you could also say two people, or you can say two things, or you can say... Uh, two things that I miss would be, and then you mention what those things are. Um, but um, let's try to make sense of it here. Um, so one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking. So I've included uh, a few relative clauses. And let me get you to answer this by me asking you the question. So what would you be nervous about when traveling to another country? What would you be anxious about? What would you be comfortable with? What would you be curious about? What would you be enthusiastic about? What would you be fascinated by? Um, let's say that we choose the country, uh, maybe France, all right? So France seems like a very touristic place. And I think that a lot of people would like to travel to this particular country. So let's do that second one. One thing I'd be nervous about is, all right, that's going to follow the bird to be. And maybe for me is getting lost, all right? Uh, let me try to keep the format a little bit because I want you to notice that we have one thing is the noun, uh, the relative clauses I'll be nervous about. Then this is followed by the verb to be. And then this will be followed by the object of the sentence. Okay, so for me, one thing I'd really be nervous about, or one thing I'd be nervous about, is getting lost. One thing I'd be anxious about is getting to know this new city. One thing I'd be comfortable with is the weather. One thing I'd be curious about is learning about the country's culture. One thing I'd be enthusiastic about is learning the new language. One thing I'll be fascinated by is getting to know the history behind the architecture in that particular city. And so you get the idea. Um, so if we follow this pattern, subject plus relative clause plus verb to be plus the object, then we shouldn't uh, have any difficulties expressing these ideas. Uh, just one last thing that I would like to mention that if I change the subject to plural, Okay. I will need to change the verb to be, and I will also need to change the object, because both things need to be plural. They need to match with whatever the subject is. So for example, two things I really miss are my mom's cooking and my room at home. Okay, That's just to give you an example. And if the subject changes to something plural, then you will need to do the same for uh, the rest. So what I would like for you to do now is to practice this concept, but now answer this in your own way. So what would you be nervous about? What would you be anxious about? What would you be comfortable with? And try to give as many responses as you possibly can. Try to write these ideas down as this will help you learn this concept.
Hello. Hi. Hey, hello. Yeah. Hey. Never say goodbye. Can you guys hear me? Letty, how are you, Letty? <laughs> Letty, you, can you hear me or no? Yes, Hello? teacher. Ah, okay. I can hear you. Okay, good. So, as we can see, it's only a matter. Yes, can you hear me or or no? Yes. Yes, teacher. Ah, okay, okay. I think I we... hear you. Teacher. Yes. Okay. Good, Helio. I think maybe I had a problem with the with the audio. Okay. So as... yeah, I think because it's raining, some places it's raining. Ah. Uh, okay. Okay. So good. And so now we understand when do we use it and how do we use it. Really, here in the platform, we use it to describe our trips, our vacation, the things. But it's not only that. Okay. Even emotions. What the mushrooms tell you? Even emotion. This is to talk about the emotion too. Ah, yes, anything, anything that you want. So mm -hmm. for, we're talking about uh, food. Okay, good example, food. So uh, when mm -hmm. to when I go to a restaurant, when I go to a restaurant, one thing I always order is a drink. One thing. Oh, it's a drink. Yeah. Okay. Or uh, one thing I like. One thing I like, and then you put, when you go to Pizza Hut, ah, when you go to La Pupuseria, the, ah, whatever it is, but you use it to, okay. to express your feelings or your emotions about the topic. Oh, okay. I see. I see what you mean. Okay. Okay. One thing that, one thing that, uh, one thing that I need is my glasses. Oh, okay. For well, reading. Yes, exactly. One thing that I need for reading is my glasses. So, okay. You can make anything, any expression. All it is is about you, about your opinion. Okay. Well, let's say, let, 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 let me try. One Wanna thing try? I like, mm -hmm. one, to one thing uh, I, 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 I like it. Traveling to Mexico and going to the uh, cathedral, Guadalupe Cathedral. Mm -hmm. I think it, it is called like that, the Guadalupe Cathedral. You know, in, and I stay, I stay in there for a couple of days. Okay, make, it was, it, it was, you, it was make the fine. sentence again. Make the sentence again. Okay. One thing I, I I like it when I travel when, when I travel to Mexico is go, going to uh, Cathedral Guadalupe Cathedral is, is, is it what it's called? Correct. Guadalupe Guadalupe they say that el, the cathedral is it cathedral okay. or is it church? No, it's a cathedral. So a cathedral, yeah, the cathedral. The cathedral, we're looking at the cathedral. Yeah, okay, I, 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 I used... All right, uh -huh. explain a little bit. Okay, so it's clear that if you are talking about the future, about the things that you imagine, then you use wood. So for example, if you are talking about something in the future, one thing mm -hmm. would really miss is, or one thing I'd like, I'd like to see is Guadalupe Cathedral. This is for the future. Oh, okay. If I'll you talk, the future thing. All right. talk about the present, if you talk about now, then it's one thing I like, one thing I <laughs> about, one thing I miss. Then you okay. 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 All right. Let's try another. Uh, okay. Okay. Don't worry. Let's, let's try, try someone okay. else. Don't worry. Teacher, I have a. A question. Okay, Monica, go ahead. Try, Monica. Uh, in the um, in the uh, screen you share, okay. have a last uh, sentence uh, and say. My my question is, in what moment I use 
the sentence to people in parentheses who um that I email every day. I don't understand that that phrase. The part is the same thing. What are you talking about? The first is the subject. What are you talking about here? The other example: two people I email every day are my parents. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let's give an example. If if you go on a trip, who do you call? Who do you telephone? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, ah, uh, for me, one person. I'd call is my wife, but maybe for another person, two people, they would, two people I'd call are my children. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. And it's not only necessary for the, for the job or the email, it's anything. Mm -hmm. So imagine something happened. You are in the street, you are in mm -hmm. the street and then boom, the, the gang said, give me the money. Give me the money, money. Ah, ah. What do you do? Ah, one thing I would do is call the police. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or okay. yes, Roxana. Teacher, I don't know if if she asked about the who and that the relative pronoun. When I I remember in another class I I. I studied about you can use uh, that with with things, and and for example, in the first one, one thing, and okay. you use who or that with with the with, with the when the noun is a person, Correct. you can use both relative, who or that. Correct. Yes, Roxana, you are correct. If you're talking about a person, you can use who, or you can use that. If you're talking about things, only that is not correct who. Okay. That, is that okay? Yes, thank you. Okay. So let's try, let's try to use it, this concept in different contexts. Let's try together to make sure that it's clear. Okay, so here we have, okay, this is from 5.5. This is 5.5. So here's one thing I would be excited by. Imagine you go to another country. What are you excited by? Go ahead, guys. Tell me. Don't be scared. It's okay. Yeah, maybe right. prove prove some food. Ah, good. But it's not proof. It's try. Okay. One thing I would be excited by is true. trying. Teacher. Yes. yes. What, uh, what this number is? Ah, five. Uh, five point five. Thank you. You're welcome, Ali. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think I'm very curious about, about, oh. the, about the ladies. No. So we have three things. One thing you would be excited by. Okay. Hey, what is another thing you would be anxious about or curious about? Okay. And like I say, is we use it to describe what your idea is for the situation. Edwin, are you married? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes. I'm being scared to say. <laughs> yes, Edwin. Yes. Uh, I'm married, but yeah, I'm married. Married, but not happy. Or what, what happened, Edwin? What happened? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Not That's very happy. One. Not very That's happy. I see. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one. So, so uh, I, I, I'm married, but I live, I live, I live I'm, I'm separating. Uh, ah, okay, okay. Uh, that, that's uh -huh. okay. okay. So now. sorry, Edwin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. 
Congratulations, uh, Edwin. Congratulations. Uh, oh, Why? Okay. <laughs> Why? Congratulations. <laughs> oh, we are lucky guys. Thanks, God. We are lucky guys. <laughs> thank yeah. you. Thank you. When you get married, when you think about getting married is when you use this. For example, for me, one thing I, in, in my case, I am married. So I use the past tense. No, I would. I use the past tense. One thing I was, one thing I was nervous about was dancing. I don't like to dance, but in the wedding, it's an obligation. So Why me, not dancing? I don't, I don't like it. Mm -hmm. I know. So if you listen, <laughs> if you listen, I don't use I would. No, I didn't say one thing I would. I use one thing I was because for me, married is in the past. But maybe for Monica, marriage is in the future. So then married, Monica would say one thing I would be nervous about is the, I don't know, the, the, the celebration mm -hmm. dress. Yeah. Yeah, the the is the dress. Mm -hmm. I was nervous. I was nervous uh, because I don't want to run in the in the celebrate for the wedding. Good. Remember to use the past tense. No, I don't want to. Is I didn't want to. I didn't want to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, we use it in many, many contexts. But this is the function. The function is to give your opinion, to express your ideas for describing your emotions. So now let's go return and try one more time. Let's try to complete together. If you go to another country, what do we say? One thing I would be excited by. Hi, is by the, is the ladies. My funding is trading the local food. Good, good, Oli. Remember the pronunciation is trying. It's try. Trying the local food. Okay. Yes. All right, let's try number two. Number two, the C. No, don't hear. The, no, the thing. Look. Oh, yes, 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 sir. This I thing I will be. Will be. I would be. The most. Eh, ya no puedo ver más porque se me es muy chiquita mi pantalla. Okay, okay. The most. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. The thing I would be most curious about. And yes. Has is meeting people my age. What about number three? Yeah. What do you think is number three? Um, some, some, something I will be actum into. Anxious. About is something. Is not understanding no. the language. Yes. Yes. Okay. So you see? Yes. Why? Because we put your opinion, your ideas to come to start and then what you think. Here is we are looking at the future. Because we are looking at the future, we use would. But is the same function if you talk about the past or in other situations. So let's try some examples. Give me an example. In future or in past, whatever you like. About the future. Okay, no problem. For example, if I go to the go to Honduras, I would like to eat mangustin. It's it's a fruit. It's it's a fruit, and it's not uh, uh, in El Salvador. 
there isn't that kind okay. of food or well, fruit. So, Mangustin is the name. Okay, so the it was, and it's delicious. Okay, um, so the sentence it for me. The sentence. One thing I would like to try is mangustin, or one thing I would like to eat is mangustin. What okay. one thing I would like to eat is mangustin? Exactly. And then you can explain because it's delicious and it's something that we don't have, and, but you begin with this structure. Okay. Okay, let's try. Monica, give me an example. Okay. Sometimes uh, I was uh, to traveling, uh, traveling more in youngest age. Mm, no, it's not very no. your, your idea, Monica. Try again your idea. Remember how we make the sentence, how we begin. Okay. Um, sometimes I... Something, something. Something, something, something I really... Uh, I really, I'd be anxious about my working tomorrow. So, so, all right. So something I'd be anxious about is working tomorrow. You can repeat? Yes, I put it okay. to help you also. Okay, that way it's easier for you to understand. Something. One, would. one thing I would like to try when I travel into Peru is a uh, como saltado. That's okay. Sound like that, right? That is correct. Okay, Reymar, Rey, uh, Reiner, make the sentence. Oh, okay. um, something I've been anxious about is uh, maybe flying in the in a, in an airplane. Okay, good. That's very common. Very nice. Good. Okay, Jose, try an example. Okay, go ahead, Jose, try. Something, something I will be anxious about driving is low. Okay, good. And remember, you can change for any opinion. Anxious, nervous, happy, excited, interested is only your opinion. Okay, are there any questions for that part? No, you are always here. No, we teacher. More practice. Never have. No, no, okay, yeah. let's practice. Yeah. Let's practice a little bit. In this moment, we're going to practice with our partners and we're going to see, okay? Can I say? Yes, Can I go say? ahead. One thing I would like to try when I travel into Peru is a lomo tado because it's a delicious food. Exactly, exactly. So you can talk about the future uh, in a wedding, the, the trip, the, even the future of El Salvador. I, for El Salvador, one thing I am nervous about is the Bitcoin, whatever, is only give your expression, your opinion. Let's practice with our partners, try, Please try to use different emotions, not only anxious. Use 
nervous, happy, excited, I'm glad, but I to use different words. Hi everyone, by the end of this class you'll be able to express your feelings towards traveling to formula here, subject plus relative clause plus the verb to be and then the object, uh, that, that's the activity. What we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to borrow this object and we're going to turn that into the subject of our sentence. Um, so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep one of those ideas there so you can see exactly what happens whenever we make that particular change. What we want to do is we want to change this statement, one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking, into my mom's cooking is one thing I really miss. By the way, it's important to mention, and I think I did not mention this in our previous lesson, that what you see in parentheses is optional. That means that you can either use it or 
you know, excluded from your sentence. So one thing that I really miss is my mom's cooking. That's correct. But also if you just say one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking. Either one of those two sentences is correct. Let me write this structure down so you can see what's going to happen whenever we make this change. As I mentioned previously, what we want to do is we want to change this noun phrase that is being used as the subject. That means that the noun phrase, one thing I really miss, is the subject of our sentence. Uh, and basically what we want to do is we want to change that into being the object of our sentence, as you can see here in our next example. So um, the structure is the following. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have, uh, we're going to change my mom's cooking into that being the subject of our sentence. All right. So let me go ahead and write that down. I'm going to say my, my mom's cooking. That's becomes the subject of our sentence now. All right. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to make sure that um, uh, this is quite clear. So I'm going to uh, put in those spaces there. So I'm also going to. OK. So as we can see, all of those are the expressions that we're using. I don't know. Do you have any questions or is it not clear or now it's OK? I don't know if it's uh, when you talk about the something at the moment or you talk about only the event and the future event or the past event? No, the three, the three times is okay. Oh, so for okay. example, you can say, Roxanta, something I like, something I like doing is drinking coffee in the morning. Is the routine. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Good question. Very good question, Roxana. So yes, is the three times past, present, or future? Uh, future. Okay. Mm -hmm. You use only... good when it's the future. We you use past or what or yes. Uh, was if was or did in the past uh -huh. or did was. Mm -hmm. and and then and present tense. In present in tense for now, yes, correct. Okay. okay. I understand. Excellent. Thanks. Excellent, guys. Well, thank you very much. We're going to pause there. And then tomorrow we practice more, trying to use more about talking about trips and other things, okay? Okay, teacher. Good Thanks. night. Guys. See, See you later. later. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.